Hello everyone, I'm Sergeant Major of the Army Retired Dan Daly, and welcome to this edition of Soldier Today Podcast. Soldier Today Podcast is a product of the Non-Commissioned Officer and Soldier Programs Director at the Association of the United States Army. Soldier Today subjects focus on those topics that are relevant and needed by our soldiers and their families serving in the regular Army, Army National Guard, and the Army Reserve. For our discussion topic today, we are welcoming back the United States Army Recruiting Command, USAREC. USAREC's mission is to recruit America's best and brightest volunteers that are able to deploy, fight, and win. The U.S. Army Recruiting Command is responsible for manning both the active Army and the U.S. Army Reserve, ensuring security and readiness for our nation. Recruiting operations are conducted throughout the United States, Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, Guam, American Samoa, and at U.S. facilities in Germany and Asia. Today, we welcome Command Sergeant Major John W. Foley, who recently became the Senior Enlisted Leader for the U.S. Army Recruiting Command at Fort Knox, Kentucky. Command Sergeant Major Foley assumed responsibility as the Senior Enlisted Advisor of USAREC on July 23, 2020, from our previous guest on the show, Command Sergeant Major Tabitha Gavia. Command Sergeant Major Foley is here to provide us an update on the Army's efforts to man the force during these difficult times and give us some insight on what's in store for the future of USAREC as he and the newly appointed Commanding General, Major General Kevin Vereen, lead the Army's recruiting efforts into the future. Command Sergeant Major Foley, congratulations on being selected as USAREC and Fort Knox Command Sergeant Major, and welcome to the show. SMA Daily, thank you very much, and it's my pleasure to be on the show to join you on the Soldier Today podcast. Well, Sergeant Major, thank you, and I appreciate you taking the time. The recruiting business is a very busy business, as you know. You've had some history. We'll talk about that but we appreciate you taking the opportunity to give us an update on what's going on inside USAREC. So, Sergeant Major, I'd like to start with a little bit about you. Command Sergeant Major Foley, I got a chance to read your bio, and I would encourage our listeners to check it out for themselves on USAREC's webpage, and that is at recruiting.army.mil. But I thought it'd be appropriate to highlight just a few of Command Sergeant Major Foley's accomplishments. Command Sergeant Major Foley is a native of Panama City, Florida, and enlisted in the U.S. Army on July 12th of 1989, the same year I enlisted, Sergeant Major, as a 16 Tango Patriot Missile Crew member. Command Sergeant Major Foley has more than 31 years in the Army, including 15 years of overseas service and deployment starting with Operation Desert Shield and Storm through the present conflicts in the Middle East. Command Sergeant Major Foley has served in every leadership position from team leader to division and post Command Sergeant Major and comes to USAREC from his last assignment as Post Command Sergeant Major of U.S. Army Fire Center of Excellence at Fort Sill, Oklahoma. Command Sergeant Major Foley is also a graduate of the U.S. Army Sergeant Major Academy Class 58 and has an impressive amount of military and civilian education as well as awards and decorations. So that's a little bit about Command Sergeant Major Foley, the soldier. Command Sergeant Major Foley, can you share with us a little bit about what it was like growing up in Panama City in the 70s and 80s and what inspired you to join the Army? Absolutely. Thank you, SMA Daily, on that, and, and I'm glad you kept it a little short. But I'll tell you that, you know, growing up in the 70s and 80s, that was a long time ago, and that was kind of a blur. Uh, yeah. But my father actually retired from the United States Air Force in 1974. Wow. And actually, everybody in my family served in the Air Force, except for me. And so living in Florida and actually being moving around a lot, especially around Air Force bases, as my father retired from Tendall Air Force Base down at Panama City and then Eglin near the Destin Fort Walton Beach area. But we also moved around too to uh, North Carolina, which is Seymour Johnson Air Force Base. So you can tell we moved around a little bit after he retired. And so that was fun and moving around. And the real thing you'll know about my family is kind of a family tradition to serve in the military. I chose the Army because, you know, I wanted to really serve my country. I joined for education and I just want to accomplish something on my own and make a difference. And that's the primary reasons why I joined the Army out of Panama City, Florida. Absolutely, Sergeant Major. Many of us did the same thing. You know, I initially started my journey in the Army for the same goals. I wanted to serve my country like my father did and my brothers and my grandfathers and also take advantage of the great college benefits the Army offers us, right? But as happens to many of us, I fell in love and stayed for quite a long time, as so did you. I noticed your bio that you're a graduate of the United States Army recruiter course. Can you tell us a little bit about your tour as a recruiter back in your young NCO days? Yeah, so my young NCO days, so I was actually a staff sergeant for about a month and a half uh, (laughs) when I got selected to be a DA select recruiter. At the time, I was like, uh, 
what the heck? You know, so why? And so I moved out. Actually, the recruiter school was in Fort Ben Harrison, Indiana at the time, downtown Indianapolis. I was a 22-year-old staff sergeant. I had about five and a half years in the Army. And so I was very young when I went on recruiting duty. I was actually stationed in Fayetteville, uh, Arkansas, recruiting station, which was assigned to Oklahoma City Recruiting Battalion out of 5th Brigade. That time, it was a different era, obviously, mid-90s. This is the beginning of 95 era, so post-Desert Storm. You know, we had a significant drawdown in the Army, as you know, coming out of Desert Storm. Yeah. We were in some conflicts like Somalia, Haiti, Bosnia at the time, but a very different time in our country and in the Army. When I served as a recruiter, brand-new detail recruiter, I had great teammates. There was actually three of us that reported on the same day from school. So we were all had uh, similar backgrounds coming in. And the college that we were at in Fayetteville was University of Arkansas. And at that time, very prominent track and field, basketball school, got after it in football. But much like the rest of our command, we had some rural areas. I was assigned to some rural areas that you had to drive you know, upwards of sometimes an hour to hour and a half just to get to a place where you need to talk to potential prospect. And so what I learned about recruiting is success and failure. And really, recruiting duty was really the first time in the Army that I really kind of experienced failure. You know, accepting and overcoming rejection becomes a regular thing. And you got to overcome that. And you got to face that adversity and figure out how to get better. So during my time, you know, from 95 to 98, we had two significant events that happened during my tenure that you don't ever see them coming. One of them was the OKC bombing that occurred in, in April 95. And so that was our recruiting battalion out of the federal building in OKC. And so that was a significant event for us. And then later on that year, in October 95, we had a significant government shutdown. Well, we couldn't even turn on the lights in the recruiting station. We couldn't drive our cars. We couldn't even make phone calls because back then they were a long distance if you died outside the area. And so we had to overcome some challenges back then, in a different environment, different challenges, but you have to figure those challenges out and overcome those and then capitalize on how we get better as an Army and, and then back then as a recruiting station. So overall, that was a great experience. It taught me a lot, my interpersonal skills, how to approach and engage people, and especially today with our senior military leaders and our civic leaders. And I wholeheartedly believe that I would not be here today if I did not serve as a very junior detail recruiter in the 90s. And so I really cherish those moments and cherish the times I had in recruiting command during that time. Thank you for sharing that, a little bit about your growing up story, Sergeant Major. And, and it is important that you have the knowledge and experience, even if it is back when you're a staff sergeant, of what it was like, the day-to-day -day work that it takes to inspire the young men and women in this nation to join the military. So I know that we are very blessed to have you in the leadership role there with all of your accomplishments throughout your career, but highlighting the fact that you were also a recruiter, Sergeant Major. Speaking of recruiting, Sergeant Major, I'd like to transition now. When we last had an Army Recruiting Command representative on here, Sergeant Major Gavia, your predecessor, she was telling us about National Hiring Days. This was the first virtual hiring campaign the Army had ever done. Can you tell us how that went and how it turned out for you? The first thing I'll do is I want to recognize Major General Muth and Command Sergeant Major Gavia. That was a phenomenal command team that led this organization for two years. The vision that they had and the planning of execution and the execution of Army National Hiring Days, you know, was phenomenal. And as you know, we pulled that off in about just six weeks of planning. You know, it generated more than 21,000 leads and about 600 different news stories and 600 media outlets across the country. But more importantly than that, I think, is it created a massive buzz on social media. And so when you talk about the impact that our community partners had in that event, like AUSA, and uh, helping us create uh, traction on social media channels, and we could have done this alone because it takes all of us to make this happen with Army National Hiring Days. So all of our veterans, all of our retirees, our service organizations, our nonprofits, they help us tell the story of what the Army has to offer to our young people today. 
We also had an incredible amount of support from leaders and all of our units across the Army. So the mentality and the philosophy of every soldier's recruiter, and that's just not during Army National Hunter Days. That's every day of the year. We're all recruiters, and we have a responsibility to tell our story across the Army. So bottom line is we had a, the entire Army focused on recruiting like never before. But i like to share a couple of successful stories or successful the times that we had within our, some of our priority cities, and those are our larger cities that have large populations of people that we can connect with. So Baltimore alone had over 2,100 leads, Central California about 1,100, Miami 850. And so those are all challenging markets that we have to be successful in and, and really penetrate and connect with people. But most notably, the medical recruiting brigade that's right here at Fort Knox and has its five recruiting battalions arrayed across USAREC had over 1,800 leads. So these are medical professionals that wanted to join our team. And if you think about that, and if you think about COVID and what the impact of COVID did, we had lots of volunteers that really wanted to help. They wanted to help our country and they wanted to help the Army. And so that's really what we're looking at. And we're looking at the momentum of taking this into FY21 and future with similar events as well. Well, thanks for that update, Sergeant Major. And, you know, all of us have been affected by COVID and still are to this day and probably will be for some time. And I can imagine the challenges and I can imagine a young staff Sergeant Foley having to deal with the challenges you talked about while being compounded by something like a national and a worldwide pandemic. So, uh, hats off to the previous leadership and now both you and the new CG for the mission that you must continue because we got to continue to recruit our soldiers. And I know our listeners are interested to hear the effects of how it's going this year, the National Hiring Days campaign and all the things that your recruiters are doing out there. I mean, how is this year's mission going? Well, I'll tell you that when you look at what Congress has mandated, so Congress has mandated an end strength of 485000 for the regular Army. And we get that through various calculations, but the amount of people who choose to continue their Army career and those that choose to separate or retire determines how many people or new soldiers we need to bring on into the Army. And so that fluctuates year to year. And, you know, we're obviously optimistic that we're going to reach our 485,000 goal for the regular Army. 50% of our youth know little or nothing about Army life. So the hiring days helped us raise awareness and plant that seed for thought for those going forward. That said, you know, it's been a challenging year, as you mentioned, with COVID, and then coupled with uh, racial and social unrest throughout the country. And so the good news is when I talk about the end strength, that retention has actually been very, very high for the Army. People want to continue to serve our nation, and they want to be able to help our team. And so that's when we're talking about for the Army's end strength and recruiting role the role that recruiting plays into both of those components. Absolutely, Sergeant Major. And I think you said it best earlier. It's not just a USAREC mission. This is an Army mission. So, and strength is recruiting, retention, and making sure we're taking care of the soldiers that are on active duty by keeping them healthy and safe as well. And I know that it is a tough year, right? But USAREC is going to continue to push forward. And I agree. you got to get the word out because America's youth, they at least have to have the choice. And to have the choice, they have to have an understanding of service in our military. So, what a phenomenal campaign to get the word out and make this a conversation at the American dinner table of choice to serve in the United States Army or the other branches of service. You mentioned the future, Sergeant Major, and you mentioned, uh, you know, moving into FY21. And I'm sure we all know we're going to have challenges as we transition to the next year. So how is it looking for FY21 in Army recruiting? We know there will be continued challenges with COVID and social tensions going on in the country. But how are recruiters overcoming these challenges? So our recruiters are in tune with the audience and their recruiting demographic. You know, those recruiters on the ground, they know that those areas know demographics more than anyone else. So many of them already know what needs to be done to overcome the COVID challenges and, and address the social tensions. We as leaders, we just need to listen and learn from them. They're young, they're creative, and they're innovative. We just need to be able to listen to them and then remove the obstacles so they can excel. The innovation and creativity is crucial to the success of this command. You know, our recruiters shape the Army future, and they have learned the lessons from COVID to continue to evolve in how we do business and how we 
on board and bring in new people into our army. And so we had to improve some autonomous recruiting operations to decrease the reliance on face-to-face interactions, especially with the COVID environment. And then we actually had to accelerate some of the plans that we had in the future in order to adapt to a change in environment, especially on the technology side of things. And virtual hiring campaign is allow us to do that to ensure our virtual and digital capabilities are more user-friendly than uh, ever before. And so some of the good news stories I will share with you that really how recruiters adapted is they came up with creative ways to engage the youth online. And so we had recruiters in New England that hosted hangman competitions and trivia events. We had New York City Battalion host a virtual live dance party, if you can believe that. We had the Army Warrior Fitness Team that resides right here on Fort Knox, part of our engagement brigade. They conducted daily workouts on Instagram Live that got a lot of hits. We also had three recruiters in Syracuse Recruiting Battalion that ran a Call of Duty tournament that really produced about 1,000 leads. So if you think of that in comparison to like the New York State Fair, which lasts about three weeks, and we rent some space out there with some recruiters to prospect that entire time for three weeks. In that time, the fair will get about 200 to 300,000 visitors, and the battalion usually gets about 700 to 900 leads. So in three weeks at a New York State Fair, 700 to 900 leads versus three recruiters running a Call of Duty tournament that received 1,000 leads. And so you can see how they've adapted And, uh, you know, just goes to show, if we listen to our young people out there, they have all the creativity and innovation. Us older folks, that's a little less and a little more diminished as we get older. Yes, sir. You know, this siege is perfectly in in discussing what you and the new CG bring to USAREC. You mentioned a lot about the team and the soldier. It's important. But can you tell us how you're going to empower recruiters and get after the mission and talk about how your leadership style and what you bring to contribute to the success of the next recruiting year. You know, I want to make sure our recruiters are supported in the field. That's the big thing with leadership to enable our NCOs, to enable our leaders, not only to succeed, but to excel, both physically and mentally. So we talk about our tactical capabilities, our access to equipment and tools that they need in the field. And then we talk about on the mental side, hey, we have to be able to take care of our soldiers and families. we got to make sure that they're in the best physical and mental shape so they can execute and be a high performer. I believe in empowering our leaders. We want them to take on challenges. We want them to take on some risk, and we want them to be able to learn from their mistakes so they can learn and grow. So that's how I kind of see things. I really have three keys to excellence that I kind of message throughout my time as a leader, and they're no different in this command, and they're probably more relevant in this type of command with the geographical dispersion of our recruiting force, which spans over 1,400 locations globally. And so the number one thing I talk about is, you know, be fit, be well-trained, disciplined, and resilient to be able to overcome that adversity when it happens. Number two is to improve yourself every day and always make everyone around you better. And number three live our values, the Army values, every day of the week. Respect everyone and treat everyone right. And I think if we can do that, we will not only be successful, but we will achieve excellence every day. Sorry, Major, I couldn't agree with you more. Perfectly said. I've always said is you get a physically fit, highly motivated, dedicated soldier that's got the right focus, you can accomplish any mission. So I think your guidance is going to ring true and be well-received throughout the team. You mentioned earlier that, you know, it's, it takes a whole army. And you also mentioned the fact that you need to have the conversations in the American homes about the opportunity to serve, right? And our Americas, you need to know that there's a military out there that, that presents them all kinds of opportunities. What can our audience or our veterans and retiree and community influencers do to help the Army's recruiting efforts, particularly knowing the challenge that we have right now will persist for at least the short term? Obviously, Recruiting Command conducts the mission for the Army to find qualified, highly qualified people and our best and brightest to serve in our Army. You know, that's our mission. That's the Army's mission. But really where it comes down to is our veterans and retirees. There's millions of them out there. 
and they are some of our most integral voices to helping our recruiting efforts across America. Being vocal with colleagues, with friends, with community partners, with civic leaders goes a long way towards shaping the true narrative of what the Army is and what we can offer our youth today. So some of the things I think our influences can do pointedly is share their own Army story. Good, bad, all of it. Because everybody has a unique story, and no one's story is going to be the same. So the more they can do that, the better our youth know what the Army is about. Engage with their friends, engage with other community influencers, and that will spread like wildfire about what the Army can offer the youth in their area. They can also talk to their local recruiting battalion commander or go to a local station in their areas just to offer assistance. They can share Army information on social media. You know, social media is very powerful and it reaches a broad audience. And so sharing information on social media is very impactful. And then encouraging young people in their area about Army careers. You know, the Army careers in the Army, not everybody kicks in doors and is a combat soldier you can do in the Army with over 150 occupations. And then interviewing with local recruiters uh, live or on social media pages. And then just don't be afraid to engage local media to spread our message. So obviously, we lean heavily on all of our veterans to tell their story, to positively influence our youth. And, uh, you know, we always say every soldier is a recruiter. Absolutely, everyone that soldiered for life, uh, they're recruiters as well. Absolutely, Sergeant Major, and you said it best, soldiers for life. And like you said, I think that sharing the story is one of the best calls to service there is. It's what inspired me and you said yourself to join and serve in our military. And it's something that our veterans are very capable and good at doing and sharing the goodness of service in our Army. So, well, Sergeant Major Foley, it was a pleasure to have you with us today. And unfortunately, we're out of time, but I'd like to give you the last words. Do you have any final thoughts you'd like to provide our listeners? So, you know, when you talk about Army National Hiring Days, what we just did, you know, the first ever event with six weeks of planning, you're going to see a little more of that in the future. Actually, you'll probably see a lot more. We're going to start a campaign in FY21 with some more virtual events as well. And the first one, first quarter, is going to be called Virtual Blitz. And we're going to do kind of the same, and we're going to build some momentum of what the previous command team put in place to capitalize on that environment, to capitalize in the virtual world, and to really dominate social media to tell our story. And we're going to focus in uh, larger cities like New York City, Los Angeles, and Philadelphia. We're going to see a little bit more than that, and that's going to enable our recruiting force, enable our Army to have a well-trained, well-equipped, well-manned force to be able to fight and win our nation's war if called upon. It's my pleasure to serve in the United States Army Recruiting Command. There's no greater privilege to be a leader in our Army. And uh, I don't take that lightly, and I don't take that for granted. And I really cherish serving people and helping us achieve our mission. SMA Daily, thank you for having me on. And this has been really fun, and I enjoyed this. And hopefully we can do this again on a later date. Really just want to say that the Army is what I love. And really what we want to do and help our Army win no matter what. Sergeant Major, congratulations again on the new position. Thank you for taking the time to give us that update. And we will invite you back next year to hear about the great success that the Army recruiting team is doing across our country. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to know how you can help and get more information, please visit recruiting.army.mil or, as Sergeant Major Foley said, one of your local battalions that are out there in the communities or even a recruiting station, they'll give you all the information they need if you want to assist and help with the United States Army's efforts to recruit the next generation of soldiers. Our time has come to an end to close this edition of Soldier Today podcast. All of us here at the Association of the United States Army want to thank Command Sergeant Major Foley for joining us today, for sharing his story and giving us a great update on U.S. Army Recruiting Command and the National Hiring Days. As Army alums, I can say for all of us across the country, thank you and the entire USREC team for what you have done and all that you will continue to do for our Army. To all our listeners, thanks for joining us. Be sure to subscribe to the Army Matters Podcast on iTunes and everywhere podcasts are found. The Army Matters Podcast series is brought to you by the Association of the United States Army, the U.S. Army's professional association, member-supported, Army-connected. Visit us at AUSA.org for more information or to become a member. 
Your membership helps AUSA continue to carry out its mission to educate, inform, and connect with the total army, our industry partners, and our supporters of a strong national defense. For questions or to provide topic recommendations, email us at podcast at AUSA.org. Have a great Army Day. Hua.